me. She was, a, well, I guess they call them sculptresses, but <laughs> she was a sculptor, and, uh, and she was from Germany, and she had this uh, house that she built here, which does look like a little fort. And um, she had sculpted some of the people uh, that were Texas heroes. And but she was a very, very uh, independent uh, woman. She was married. She called her husband her best friend. And uh, he lived out on a plantation, but she built this place here in Austin, and she worked there. And <laughs> so and it's, I, it's not very far from here. Yeah. Just, yeah. It was not very far from the house I was living in then, and I, so I, I went there and, uh, and saw her things, but then somebody told me, I was out walking one day and I ran into this lady who was telling me about the little boy who uh, was asking questions about the statue of Prometheus, and I took that, those questions he was <coughs> asking uh, and, and used them directly in the story. Prometheus is a Christ figure, uh, and he is used somewhat in, in that way. Um, remember, Prometheus was the god who, who brought, brought us fire, and uh, for that he was punished. And Do you guys know the story, the story of Prometheus? Yes. Yeah. This part, okay. So, uh, and that, and he was, uh, you know, those old Greeks, as the old historian says, knew how to punish. I mean, <laughs> they sent a vulture uh, to pick, it, pick out his liver every day. So that was not a fun thing, but it was also uh, the business of, of, uh, of someone giving up uh, a, a life so that other people might have light uh, and, and war. And, but I also wanted to show how, how the, the little Mexican American boy, and by the way, everybody was, if they had uh, in the least looked Mexican, they were simply referred to as Mexican here. The, we didn't have the term Mexican-American. Uh, it wasn't, uh, it hadn't evolved yet. And so the fact that he was uh, a, a, a Mexican, a child, uh, I, I'm trying to show how, how um, accidental things come to people. Think people learn things so accidentally. And that he is, has been a child that is from obviously from a, a poor family. You can see because he, he rides a bicycle that's much too big for him. But he has this wonderful curiosity. And the old man kind of takes him under his, his wing and uh, explains things to him and uh, teaches again in a way that uh, people who, who have been teachers for a very long time uh, can enjoy. And so he uh, brings a certain joy to the old man's life and the old man brings a certain light of learning to him. The story says a bit about aging too. Yes, it is. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, things change with you as you get older and uh, you have different points of view about things. And you have to learn how to accept uh, certain weaknesses of the mind and body. And the old man is, uh, a, he's, he's wise enough uh, to know that this in, is indeed happening, but he's having to learn how to, to deal with it and with his wife's death uh, as, as he is. He knows he's getting older. And uh, he knows that uh, these things are happen in the in the life of a person, and so he he becomes a sort of uh, character that that we watch because we we wonder what he will do next. We wonder uh, how he will accept things, and that's you know uh, in that way. Uh, by the title, I'm trying perhaps to say that these are the ways of all flesh, men and women. This, this is the way life is. And, and a lot of it is uh, fairly uh, unhappy sometimes. But, uh, I mean, you, there's death, there's, there's, uh, there's aging, there's uh, ignorance, there's all this sort of thing. But, uh, you know, how one accepts this, how one lives with it, 
is one of the points of the story.